afternoon, uh, good evening, good morning, whatever. Welcome to How to Draw Comics Like a Pro, Hands and Feet Edition. I am your host, Mike S. Miller, a 27-year veteran of the comic book industry. This is uh, one of my latest illustrations. Um, crossover comic book I am doing called Monster Hunt. You can get that at LoneStarComic.com in the description. If you want to check it out, check it out, or please do. Otherwise, I am going to start here with a new <coughs> page. Let's drip this up. Uh, move this over. Actually, you know what? Let me close that other. Close that. Don't see. By the way, uh, Drawn and Quartered is on tonight on Edwin Boyette's channel. So do check that out. Check it out. Let me go over to YouTube. Actually, I should probably only be checking a restream because that brings in chat from multiple sources. Although then I won't be able to read super chats, so maybe I should have YouTube open. Let me go back to my channel and hit refresh. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, I am best known, for those who don't know, uh, for Injustice and for uh, Game of Thrones related uh, comics and whatnot. So. 13 people watching now, so I might as well get started. Say hello to some people in the chat. This is a workshop. This is a workshop. This is not just a simple how to draw video. So, uh, as I, I wanted to make sure that these um, these weren't just easily produced or, or, or maybe not easily produced, but just overproduced um, videos for people to watch this is actually a workshop so if you do have questions comments uh drop them in the chat uh drop them in the comment section oh i didn't check out last time's comment section let me go back let me go back and see if there were any comments from the previous episode why is it not letting me go to my own channel very strange um your channel Ba, 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 ba. So let's see how to draw a workshop. <coughs> I forgot to mention this. Whoa, 16 comments. Uh, flag, flag, flag. Uh, glad you're starting this series. Uh, glad, thank you for explaining line weight. Yeah, again, any questions <coughs> after I'm done with the basic uh, topic here, which is uh, hands and Eat. Yay. Um, then uh, please do feel free to ask questions. Great episode. Next one, how about continuing with the basics of the human forms? Actually, I did a couple of those. If you follow the playlist that this channel is on, or that this show is on, or will be on, uh, it's my tutorials playlist. And I do have a couple of videos from earlier um, on the basics of the human form. I'll probably go over that once again on this channel. But uh, right now we're just going to stick to um, today for hands and feet. Uh, I might dip into some other things. Inking with dip pens and brushes is something I'd like to know more about. The thin hair lines you put on your inked work is very nice. Thank you, Kurohige. Kurohige. Um, I'll get into that. Not that that is something I have to do on a on, you know I'll have to use my camera focusing down on the line work that I am doing and whatnot. Lion Decker is incredible, says Michael Richter. Very much appreciated his work. I was an epitome of illustration style in its modern beginnings. Yes. Uh, Aaron Alfecci says, now this is the type of content is the heart of Comicsgate. Albino Thunderbuns suggestions for the next one. Construction figures and proportions. All right. Well, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Do more of these. I am. Uh, you could do punch. Doing a punch. Um, at some point. Yeah, these are all good comments and suggestions. Uh, yeah, just keep coming, keep coming with the comments and suggestions, and um, and and that's how I'll gauge what I work on next. Hands and feet uh, is a next logical step here, but yeah, I will take suggestions for uh, future programs. Awesome stream, loved every minute. Could you possibly do one on how to f draw the figure from extreme angles? Uh, sure, at some point. Now I know how to draw a pie nose. Uh, it's rare these days to watch an artist draw that isn't a leftist. So glad you have this channel because if you have to go drive by H Mart on Bubba. All right, all right, all right. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone, for your comments. Please do um, hit those comments up. Uh, oops, I think I hit the wrong button here. Muted. Not paused. Um, 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Drop drop comments, questions, whatever you have it in the if if you're not watching this live or if you just want to comment after the fact, that's fine too. All right, let's get to this. Deselect drawing hands and feet. So, where does one begin? When here's a hand according to four-year-olds. Yay, actually it's that's not a bad hand. Um thing is that's not terribly off, is it? Now if you take this line, you just kind of thicken it up. You're right. You're there. You're there. If you give your thumb a little more beef here, you're kind of following the right line. Thicken up each of these lines. That's actually not an entirely bad hand, is it? The hand is a basic shape. It's actually more of a square than a circle if you're going from this position and then again the cylinder attaches to the base of it. We'll get into the specifics of the bone structures and the musculature and whatnot. Um, but then you have a hinge here, hinge here, hinge here, hinge here, hinge here, from which protrude other bones, bones that beget fingers. Um, but that is internal structure and anatomy, uh, whatever you want to call it. This is not actually what you end up drawing, is it? No, what you're drawing, you're drawing, again, you're drawing a square. Actually, you're drawing a wedge. Let's do this from a different angle. Let's, let's draw a hand from this angle. So you're drawing a wedge. And this is all stuff you just kind of have to have in your mind. It is not, you're drawing a wedge, it is attached to a cylinder, right? The body is made up of squares, spheres, right? Cylinders, wedges, rectangles. Hmm, what else we got? I think I can make a body out of all those. Cones? Well, no, that's just a tapered cylinder, isn't it? Um, and etc, etc. So, let's start again. You're starting with a wedge. The hand is a wedge. It is on the end of a cylinder. The wedge has cylinders protruding from it. Now the cylinders are, it's not like, hey, here's a cylinder, right? <laughs> okay, true, that is the case. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to take three cylinders and create a, uh, um, a cascade of cylinders. So what you might want to do is, have, let's see, actually what you might want to do is you want to look at your hand. You want to look at your hand. How do I want to draw this? and you decide, um, all right, I want my hand to look kind of like this. One finger kind of up, and the other finger's kind of drifting down. The best thing to learn from, again, is reality. So you have one finger going here, one finger going here, another finger going here, another finger kind of curving in here, and then your thumb is coming out here. Now these are all made of, again, cylinders. Cylinder, 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 right? Cylinder, cylinder, cylinder. Cylinder behind the cylinder, cylinder, and cylinder behind the cylinder. Cylinder, cylinder cylinder. And there we have the very simple layout of the hand. So you want to draw your, I mean for lack of a better term, you want to draw your stick figure hand. Right? Just like you did in third grade. Doing whatever you want your hand to do. And then you fill that with the cylinders. Cylinder, 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 you're going to just, I'm not going to just keep repeating cylinder. <laughs> you see what I'm doing. I'm building cylinders into the shapes of the fingers. And now these, this is 
basic structural stuff. This is not obviously going to be my final illustration. You're just getting an idea. And obviously, you look at this and you say, well, wow, I just drew that cylinder too big. So taper that cylinder in a little bit, right? Make sure it's the right length. Uh, a hand, the, the generic hand, right? Your index finger is one length. Your your middle finger is slightly longer. Your third finger is about the length of your index finger, and then your pinky is considerably shorter. So you have a cascade here. Um, drawing digitally digits. Drawing digital digitally drawing digits. That is correct. Three cylinders. Make them and create a cascade. Yeah, that's what I said. See, cascade. Um, all right, deselect. So, how to get more specific? I don't want to jump right into the. Well, actually, you know what? Let's jump into the feet because the, the feet is it's a similar paradigm. You are also drawing a wedge, right? You're drawing a wedge at the bottom of a cylinder, and then a larger cylinder, and then the cylinders of the toes. Again, they kind of curl in here and obviously your big toe is going to be your largest cylinder and oddly uh, right here? Yeah. you don't get three cylinders at least you don't three, see three cylinders one two actually you do have three cylinders on the big toe oh but the big toe only has two because it's like a thumb so you have two cylinders on the big toe which gives you get this big you got kind of got to flatten these cylinders out like that right not like you know the finger is Actually, the finger, the fingers can be flattened. Wow, I'm just thinking about that. That's what Jack Kirby did, right? His his finger cylinders were like this. <laughs> he always did these big, fat, wide. I don't know. I guess you could call them like toe thumbs or something. Toe fingers. Anyways, um, and then the the little toes are three very short cylinders. Three short cylinders. Three short cylinders and then the, the the little toe at least on my foot curls in and on my wife's foot and on the feet of everybody I know in the family um, and then you know if you want to go into the details there's the ball of the foot the arch of the foot the the heel uh, goes up to the ankle etc 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 but this the basic construct of the toe of the foot again is the wedge just like the hand is a wedge. I'm just all over the place here, aren't I? Um, so let's see, the hand wedge is more of a, uh, um, a, a less tapered block. The foot wedge is almost like a, a doorstop, right? And then you have, again, the one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, and then you have your thumb beginning over here so same same obviously hands and feet they're they're different but uh, construction basics are similar all right now how to get a little more detailed um, so after you kind of you kind of have to understand this stuff because this is structural right this is all the structural stuff you want in the back of your head when you are when you are constructing like say I'm doing somebody's arm right I'm doing like all right I got their arm and then I want to do their hand so I don't sit there and think oh my gosh it's got I have to draw a wedge I have you know this it's all back it becomes background information in your mind um, right but the the consistency uh, not the consistency it's still there like Ethan was saying cascade the fingers because that's it's it's sort of a, a natural feeling like your ha your hands can do anything right and it's fun to kind of like do like you know spider-man or doctor doctor strange or or you know rock with the devil or whatever you're gonna do you know hello ha um but sort of a natural gesturing sort of thing is this it's, it's like you just gesture your hand out and then look at it the fingers do form a cascade uh thank you ethan for mentioning that i was gonna bring it up yeah um <laughs> So it, it is a good sort of a, um, a go-to if you have a character doing something that is not 
considered abnormal or you know or, or, or terribly specific you know wrapping your hand around a, a gun or whatever um, and then cascade those fingers down along that cascade line do, do, do. again keeping in mind the three cylinders and conforming them to whatever um, whatever initial quote-unquote stick figure layout you have for the hand right like that and then your thumb comes out here but I'm not sitting there thinking oh my gosh I have to do uh, I have to do the wedge and I have to do the cylinders it becomes once once you understand that once that is logged into your mind then it it's you know you can sit there and you can just draw a hand and be like you know like oh yeah 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 because you're like you're just thinking well yeah because uh, I know already the the basic underlying structure so I don't have to think about it every single time I draw um, it's just it's just there it I guess it becomes second nature I guess is the way to say it um, you know after 20 30 40 years whatever however long it takes you to draw uh, so let me actually before I do anything um, let me tighten this one up for you so I'm gonna lighten this up I'm gonna create a new layer so in tightening up and creating the details now I'm, I'm pro I don't know maybe I should get into the specifics of I, I try to do this based more sort of a bridgman -y structural way rather than uh, getting too into the weeds on uh, anatomy and physiology um, because it's it's really I'm not gonna say it's all you need it's important to learn your anatomy um, but I think it's more important to understand the structure, the underlying structure that the, that puts the body together. Um, there are people who know their anatomy but don't understand the structure. And you look at them and they're like, wow, like all the muscles are in the right places and, and whatnot, but something just looks weird about it, right? Um, so I think it's it's it's... I'm not going to say more important. It's vitally important that you know both. Um, well, I don't know about vitally. It depends on your style. If you're going for like an anime style, then knowing your structure or a anime or a more cartoony or less less uh, detail style like me and Ethan do, um, then just knowing your structure, you can get away with that. Um, and I would I would say that's that's more important than learning your the specifics of anatomy, right? Like knowing the muscles of the forearm. That's that's anatomy. But if you're doing a cartoon, you don't have to throw that in. Uh, you don't have to know uh, the the veins split between the the first and second finger here, and then go around the third finger here, and then go back and then taper back into the arm. You know you don't have to know every little thing. And plus, anyways. Uh, everybody's everybody's veins are a little bit different they're like they're like fingerprints anyways um, but you don't have to know that the the meta metacarpals go back here into these little wrist uh, the, the bones in the palm of your hand and your wrist and then attach to uh, what is this the tibia and the fibia um, etc and etc but but hey you should look all this stuff up learn it all right all right let's go back to let's see squash that delete it deselect it zoom it um, let's do the foot again let's go back to the foot and get a little bit more specific on the foot so if I'm drawing the foot again I don't concentrate too much because I already know the foot is a wedge um, I can just kind of shorthand it out, right? I can shorthand these things. Doo, doo, doo. 
and then give your details your little veins again ball of the foot unless you have a flat foot which I don't know why why you'd specifically draw somebody with flat feet but uh, don't it's and I apologize for anyone with a flat feet my brother has flat feet but they're not attractive actually feet aren't attractive so I guess there's no real there's no real win here their feet apologies to anyone who is a foot fetishist um, tibia and fibia are the leg bones radius and ulna are the arm bones thank you related coma derp it's been it's been a while <laughs> Um, ba, ba, ba. radius and ulna that's right the radius because the radius actually spins around that's why your arm can do this right because the radius is actually these two bones are actually doing this anyways all right so foot uh, what was somebody who's asking I have flat feet and I'm super offended <laughs> I find I find feet more structurally appealing than hands. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, da, 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 da. All my characters will just have thick, non-veiny skin, I guess. Seventy percent of the population has non-standard anatomy. All right. Um. You know what? Let's do. Let's go. Uh, male versus female. Yes, men versus women. So men have thicker wrists, uh, thicker fingers, thicker. All right, let's see. And then let's do a female hand. And that's kind of a, a weird thing is that more often than not, and um, comic book artists don't think about the difference between male and female um, hands. They just like I can draw hands. Okay, so as I did before, men male hands tend to be thicker. Some hands, some males thicker than others. They tend to blunt. Right? They tend to just sort of stay not completely the same thickness all the way from from base to tip but relatively I mean Kirby kind of really you know how the thing his fingers just go like that that's kind of like a super over exaggeration of what I'm talking about right um, whereas and again thicker wrists almost almost uh, let's see if the wrist is gonna go up here like three and a half fingers wide on the wrist uh, females are Thin, much thinner, much thinner wrists, um, thinner everything pretty much, uh, and the fingers taper. Female fingers, at least in reality, maybe not always in comic books, but female fingers taper like this. Unless, uh, I don't know, you spent too many nights eating cheeseburgers or you've been taking testosterone shots so you can be a weightlifter uh, female fingers tend to taper and then you know you can give them nice little dainty fingernails this isn't the greatest illustration ever but uh, I'm just trying to get a point across here actually this is a really long hand also uh, the wrist it, it can't or the hand can taper out from the wrist right um, but kind of shorthand just don't this is John Byrne right just a straight line from the wrist of the thing it does taper a little bit so um, I don't know be mindful of that I guess um, draw a toe thumb <laughs> hold on I'm not done with hands yet so let's let's look at fingers let's look at a finger so a finger starting here it's one bone on top of another bone and then finally the fingertip right so when you're drawing the meat around this there's a fatty tissue under here 
the knuckles are relatively not fattened. You get to the knuckle, the skin crumples around it. Uh, on the on the like I'm saying, the top side, it's it's like it's skin and bone, unless you know you're inordinately large. Uh, you know, it's skin and bone. Uh, the finger tip is obviously tipped by a fingernail unless you are Elliot Fernandez which in which case you've eaten all of your fingernail and it's only about this big but let's not pick on Elliot right now um, <laughs> the bottom side is a little fattier tissue right so the bottom side is a little fattier tissue and then again for males it generally comes to s s kind of either either around or semi flattened tip um, but not like a female a female all of this would be gone um, and the female tip would taper in like that just like the bones do I guess maybe they just have less fat on their on their hands for some reason I haven't really looked into why um, so one way to sort of um, sort of exaggerate this I guess is by 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 thinking of your your bones your knuckles as like um, bamboo ridges or, or, or such so you can like you can play with the, the knuckles and give them a little extra little extra girth um, and it is just a stylus success. Hold on a second. Is my son going to get Jojo? All right, he is. Man, there's two buses pulled up today. Did I get an extra kid from school? Um, so that is one way to do it. Who, who does this? I know there are artists that do this. Where the, I do it a little bit sometimes. I just give a little more attention to the knuckles than reality should probably dictate. Um, of course there are people, there are people who have extremely bony knuckles. So yeah, there's, this is all sort of, um, generalized, um, generalized, uh, structure, generalized anatomy, however you want to, however you want to say it. Okay, let's see, it's holding up a little flower. There you go. Wee flower, be free. Um, hey, nice shirt. Oh, thank you very much. I actually have two of these. It may seem like I wear this shirt a lot, but I have two of them. <laughs> I used to wear them to Comic Cons. Uh, what if you are trying to draw Ethan's thumbs? Well, if you're trying to draw Ethan's thumbs, what you want to start with in your mind is a big toe, right? So you get a big wide flattened cylinder here then you get the crumpled up skin of the knuckle and then you want to give them a great big thumbnail toe thumbnail so that it feels like you're drawing a thumb or a toe that great big hairy knuckle and then <laughs> you guys are so mean I can't believe I play along with you. Um, let's see. Hey, Mike, what you drawing? Uh, hands and feet. Hands and feet. Any other questions? Let's see. Someone was saying fists. So drawing a fist. All right. You want to think it's it's a block, right? It's a block. It's divided up into four sections. Um, I. You, you wrap, obviously, if you know how to throw a punch, you wrap your thumb on the outside to close up the fingers and tighten it up, right? You want to express the knuckles at the top. And what I tend to do is I think of the two, this, I learned this from Taekwondo, think of the two fingers. This is the, the, the two knuckle punch Taekwondo teaches. Um, Wing Chun teaches a three knuckle punch, but you punch with these three knuckles. In Taekwondo, you punch with these two knuckles. Um, 
but I do then taper the other two knuckles in inside inside thumb here and then again the, the the fat on the inside of the finger bunches up so this just becomes like a little bunch here and then you have the the skin on the inside between your thumb and your index finger uh, just folds in and creates a nice little wrinkled wedge in there right so you fold in fold in fold in it's like a think of it like a, a bat wing or a dragon wing or uh, something um, and then this is a muscle right here see that Bam. see that muscle right there I'm flexing that's the muscle right here on the outside and then the back of your thumb knuckle comes here and then follow through it's hard to hard to imagine because you have to think 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 behind what you're drawing to where the because you what you don't want to do is say like oh okay the wrist starts here because uh, no the wrist does not start there you are still dealing with the full structure of the hand so the the wedge is here the wrist or, or the cylinder for the wrist is back here so don't uh, actually that's a really big this is like an unrealistically thick comic book wrist have you seen how Joe Mad draws it he'll draw wrists like this like this this will be your wrist will be like as wide as your entire fist and you know it can look cool because Joe he mad really does understand uh, structure and that's kind of the thing once you understand structure you can play with it you can warp it you can stylistically make things ridiculous like uh, like right okay basic human structure you know here well I'm not doing I'm just doing thing but if you you know hey I'm just going out getting some chips from the cabinet basic human structure but if you understand um, if you understand how all the mechanics of the body and all the structures work you can do a creature that's like ridiculously wrong uh, um, design wise I mean design like inhuman or or exaggerated structurally right you can give him giant beefy forearms and wrists tiny little biceps um, over developed uh, deltoids a teeny tiny little head you know tiny pecs just so that the the deltoids continue to look ridiculously big but huge lats um, and then like extra m muscles in the in the uh, stomachs and uh, you know tiny little obliques um, giant you can give them giant legs you can give them giant legs and you can do all this ridiculously wrong and anatomical stuff but if you know the structure right you know how how muscle groups anchor here they anchor to the arm here um, you understand uh, the pulleys and the levers of of the body you can go in and you can make this ridiculous looking thing seem like it could be real right you can make it look like like well that would actually work in reality even though it's just wonky and goofy I mean I guess this is how you design cool monsters right heck just give this guy three fingers instead um, because because you're basing it on on a true understanding of form structure anatomy and then and then you're playing with it you're not just throwing crap at the door and seeing what sticks right you are you're designing a new I don't know anatomical construct oh yeah I could even make it into a I don't know I could make this into a robot or whatever right so this all comes from having all of that information already logged into your head 
um, and knowing eh, I'm just repeating myself but uh, I'm, trying, I'm repeating myself trying to finish this drawing <laughs> but you know you know you know and you know that's that's the sort of thing so you can make something like that which obviously couldn't exist in real life because nothing looks like that anatomically in real life but if you design it and you hand it to a 3d modeler or a, a sculptor they could build something off of that that would actually look real right I love the voice. huh I love the voice. oh cool 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 all right so um, where am I going? Uh, da, 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 da. Art says I'm taking notes, Mike. Good stuff here. Well, thank you, Art T. Bear. Art T. Bear, uh, comic book legend in and of himself. You guys all know. Any questions in the chat? I can uh, I can answer. Looks like Super Scroll. Looks like Ultron. Uh, Mike, hopefully you're hope you're well. Mike, really enjoying you showing us how to draw. You're an excellent teacher. No, I'm not. I'm a terrible teacher. Well, you know what the thing is, I can explain things. Um, I have I have no patience for teaching actual people. Like so, if you were here, and I was looking at you fail at what I'm trying to teach you, it would drive me nuts to no end. <laughs> but you can play this over and over and over again and practice without me standing over your shoulder showing. <laughs> Hands holding a sword. All right, holding an object. When drawing a hand holding an object, keep in mind there's an object in the hand. There are a number of very prominent, very successful, very famous, very popular creators who will draw a closed fist holding a gun holding a sword holding a staff if your fist looks like this the only thing you're holding in it is sweat okay drives me a little nuts uh, I won't name any names but one of them runs DC Comics um, so keep in mind if you have something if you're putting your hand around an object, the object has mass. It takes space. So if here's the palm of your hand, right? Your knuckles are curving around. All right, let me move this down a little. Eh, let's move it down a little. Your knuckles are curving around the object. Your pinky is short. It will not make it all the way around <coughs> the object. Your uh, ring finger is slightly longer and therefore it will make it slightly more around the object your middle finger is slightly longer than that and therefore it will make its way further around the object and then your in your ring uh, index finger is about the same size as your ring finger and it will slightly less than that now your thumb you have to decide what you want to do with your thumb if he's holding a sword he can ever either have a golfer's grip right where he's wrapping around the sword or he can he can bend the thumb and it would really just basically touch the tip of the uh, index finger coming around so yeah yeah I know it it may not look like as tight a grip as someone who's just drawing you know uh, <laughs> I'm gonna do it again I'm gonna do it again so someone who draws a fist, right, a tight gripped fist, right, see, that's a nice tight gripped fist. You can't, nothing, no air is going to escape that fist. And then you're like, well, gosh, I'm going to draw a sword hilt in that fist. Um, it might, like, <laughs> stylistically, it might look like it's just a really tight grip, but it's just completely unrealistic, right? You can't, you, if, if you could close your finger, your pinkies to your palm with whatever you're holding, 
uh, you're holding a pen. That's about as big of a grip as you can get. Maybe, uh, maybe a Sharpie, maybe, let's see. Even this thick of a pen. Okay, that thick, that's about as thick as you can get. If you're grabbing, where's my swords? <coughs> if you're grabbing a sword, right, you can't. The fingers won't touch the palm because the fingers are only reaching uh, the uh, the grip itself. And then again, your thumb is just touching your index finger here. So guys, it's not hard. Just stop copying people you're looking at in comic books and start looking at things in real life. You have something. You have a hammer. You have a gun. You have something that you can wrap your hand around and see exactly how it looks. Uh, your ring finger is bigger than your index finger. Oh, it well, here's the thing. The line cascades down this. See the line of my hand goes this way. So maybe if I turn my hand this way, it does. But that's unnatural. Nobody does this. Your hand naturally goes this way. Your index finger actually looks longer well at least mine like I said this is just standardized everybody's a little bit different so there are people there are people whose the these two fingers are look like the same length right there are people who these two fingers look like the same length there's there's unlimited variety but only by millimeters um, do you follow abstract design and aesthetic ratios constantly or is it just an autopilot now by now it's I'm on auto autopilot, man. Uh, my gorilla thumbs reach my middle finger. Thanks for letting me know I have abnormal hands. As I said, everyone is slightly different, but the difference <laughs> is only a matter of millimeters. Uh, let's see. So that is gripping. Anything else? To, why do comic artists always draw people with poor trigger finger discipline when holding guns? Because drawing like this looks eh, doesn't look as cool <laughs> um, index fingers are usually smaller than the ring finger you are weird mate well hey draw your own hands like I said ultimate ver uh, uh, unlimited variety but only by millimeters Vic King says I cleared th oh man I need water can you go get me a bottle of water please and thank you <clears throat> Draw the object first, then the hand. That is correct, uh, correct Art T. Bear. Um, the pinky shares ligaments with the ring finger. Yeah, yeah. That's, I don't know why that's important right now, but you can do this, you can do this, you can do this, but you can't, oh wait, am I doing the wrong one? This, this, this. No, wait, what is it I'm trying to do? You can. There's something you can only do, but the, these two... Oh, we're out of the small ones? Oops. Ah! Remember, she should be wearing gloves? What are you talking about? <coughs> um, I you only need a basic, shallow understanding of how these things work, enough to fool the average pleb. Plebe, pleb, plebeian. But anyone that understands biomechanics sees the issues. I don't understand. Um, I am literally holding a sword, not the other object, and two of my fingers touch the palm. Well, okay. Here's the thing. I'm five foot seven, slightly taller than Artie Bear, and I have small hands. So <laughs> take that into account. If, if to you, the sword I just picked up is the size of a pen, then yeah, then your fingers can touch your palm. But unless you have abnormally massive hands, then things, you're, you're not going to be able to do that. Most, anything above the, anything pretty much above the size of another finger is going to change the mass of your hand in your fist. So just keep it in mind. Um, reference stuff yourself. I just guarantee you. Uh, the artists that I'm referring to don't have hands much bigger than mine and they draw everything 
they're holding with clenched fists and it's and eh, whatever it's art I'm not gonna say it's wrong it's it just doesn't work for me <clears throat> uh, moving digits sideways individually is that what it is one two no it's it's something yeah you can't I can't move my pinky like I can move my finger all the way down this finger down this finger down I can't that's what it is if you try to hold your th three fingers up vertically or at least me maybe there's some abnormal and I could probably do this um, you can't bend your pinky by itself uh, <laughs> without moving it. like if you uh, <laughs> everyone's doing it at home I know it I know I know not true Mike is lying right now I'm way taller Art, don't make me boot you for lying, young man. Uh, you're uh, right. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I bet the other artist is Asian as well. Mm. It's not just one person. It's not just one person. The problem is that one person was a huge... Actually, not just the one person. These people. These pe I should just say image. Practically everyone at image uh, did this. And I don't know who started it and who was copying whom, but pretty much everyone at Image did this. You're holding a 357 Magnum and your hand is clenched as if it's empty, but somehow the Magnum is protruding from the top of your fist. I don't know who started it. I just know that almost everyone at Image, at least in the beginning, did that. Um, I'll have to go back and look at R.T. Bear's work to see what he did. Art, how do you plead? Uh, Mike, the pinky has no ligaments of its own. It's connected to the ring finger. That's what I'm saying. You can't bend it without the ring finger. <laughs> you, have to, you can do the ring finger by itself, though. Just go through all of the old image guys and just look at how they hold guns and weapons. Um, any other questions? Um, I could just sit here and, and draw hands while I'm answering questions because it is, although some of you probably want me to draw more feet, right? Some of you are more interested in the feet. I've got Hanshan. You need to stop Dragon. What's Dragon doing? I don't see him. Oh, there he is. 10 to 20% have different hand musculature, which allows independent movement of fingers that others don't have. The Spock thing, most people can't do it. This? I know. It's weird, right? Um, you know where that came from. That's actually a Jewish symbol for life. Um, Spock was, uh, or Spock, Leonard Nimoy was in, in synagogue. And uh, he was trying to figure out something unique to do for Spock. And he was up there and the rabbi uh, held up both of his hands in, the, in a blessing like that. And, and Leonard Des Moines like, I'm going to do, I'm going to take that to Star Trek with me. See, religion in, religion sneaking into entertainment. Strange, huh? Strange days indeed. Um, are you a fan of Sean Murphy's work too, like Doug and Richard? Any comments on his style? Um, I haven't seen much of it, but it looks good. Looks good. What I've seen. I wouldn't. I wouldn't call myself a fan, but uh, I can appreciate a good art. Good art is good art. No doubt about it. There's good art, and then there's art T bear. Oh, see what I did there. Uh, in the nineties, we were too busy making money to draw hands, right? Oh, <laughs> it's true. It's true. All right, let's do. Uh... <laughs> uh, let's. 
And remember, when in doubt, you have reference for hands on hand. It is the most easily referenceable thing <laughs> in the world is a hand. Because <laughs> unless you've only got the one hand, uh, you can draw with one and reference the other. I know, I know. Mike still can't control his trolling. Da, da, da. You should show us how to draw a tensed foot and a foot with curled toes. A tensed foot? Like with splayed out toes and whatnot. Heart is savage. Um, trolling is a sin. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, there's something we should talk about. Fingernails. Let's get up and close. Up and up and close. Up close and personal with the fingernail. So the cylinder, the end of the fingertip right the fingernail at least okay and here's another thing everybody's fingernails are different you can either reference your own uh, or if you have egregiously ugly fingernails which some people do I don't hold it against them they're still good people um, I'm not fingernail phobic then then like look at the fingers from like magazines or whatnot and get an idea of what actual beautiful fingernails look like because uh, clearly we don't all have them I do but that's that's neither here nor there um, so a fingernail this is a interesting interesting um, actually no let me just stick to the fingernail <laughs> I was gonna go up the up the back of the finger so fingernails from one angle remember that the fingernail the fingernail goes, the cylinder is here. The fingernail wraps around the cylinder. So if you're looking at it straight on, it's either going to look like this, or if, or, you know, if you're looking at the bottom of the fingernail, it's just going to be a line across the top, but it curves along with the cylinder, and then it pockets itself into the quick, which isn't really something you usually pay a lot of attention to, because you're not usually drawing fingers this big. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, if you want to get really specific, then you draw the quick, which is, which is the the tiny layer of cuticle. I think it's called. Um, yeah, this is the cuticle. This is the quick. The quick is the part that connects your fingertip, or that your fingernail under the front of your finger. So, like, if you pull it up, you ever like pull it up, bend your fingernail like that, and then like this part rips off. It's like that's the quick of your nail. Uh, this is the cuticle. This is the part where if you're getting a manicure, they will take a little bamboo stick and they will shove your cuticle back up into your thing so that you don't see that ugly, ugly little cuticle. Um, but anyways, that's what it is. And so if you're sideways on the nail, sideways on the finger, <coughs> and you're looking at the nail, the nail, um, the cuticle ends here. It's not a straight line, right? The cuticle ends and the, the fingernail comes out and then it comes down at an angle because the fingernail broadens until it hits the tip of the finger and then here now again if you're this is standard right if you're a guy who eats his own fingernails bites his fingernails and you've eaten your quick back like a quarter of an inch then you're gonna end up with fingers that look like this where the fingernail goes back here and then you're you have finger coming out past that um, but it dep I, mean, I don't see a lot of call for people that you know hey can you draw me a guy who eats his own fingernails or, or chews on his fingernails um, alright what I was gonna say 
ways to make fingers look cool. So there's there's different ways to go about this. Um, I kind of like th do this thing where you you take the first knuckle and you kind of sweep it back in, right? It's kind of a stylistic thing. Maybe I shouldn't be getting into stylizing stuff on uh, on this show, but. Mm. But I got a lot of time left, don't I? <laughs> oh no, I don't, man. I only have five minutes. Wow, that that flew by pretty quick. Uh, can you teach us how to draw clothes or animals next, particularly dogs, apes, birds, reptiles, or dinosaurs? Uh, not next. <laughs> Poor Elliot. Elliot's eating all his hair now instead of his nails. Draw Ethan's toe thumbs. We already did Ethan's toe thumbs. Um, by the end of the series, every viewer will be able to draw a realistic EVS complete with toe thumbs and everything. Uh, Mike S. Miller hand model. Another thing, uh, a, a cool, this is a stylistic thing, but what uh, <laughs> Carlos Pacheco loves to do, and I love Carlos's style, so he'll draw a hand, right? And he'll, it's, it's not, again, it's not realistic, but it looks cool. He'll do this shape where the whole finger just sort of whips in here, right? I don't know if he still does this, but he just draws this whipping in of, of from the like the first knuckle whipping back into the, and I'm over over exaggerating this so you can <laughs> know what I'm talking about. Art inked uh, uh, Carlos, so he he knows what I'm talking about. I'm fairly certain. So he does this, and it is a very fun. Uh, appealing and that's that's a thing if you know structure like I was saying before if you know structure you can do things that aren't necessarily accurate but are still visually appealing and uh, this is one of the things I like um, Carlos does with his stylizing um, he does he does figures like that it's and maybe that's not exact or perfect or anything but um, <coughs> you know it is it is art it is art not RT bear. It is art, so you do have the benefit of being able to do things that are not necessarily accurate, as long as you are doing things that look good, right? Uh, otherwise, honey, you're just an art snob. You're an art snob. Do you want everything to look like uh, Leonardo da Vinci drew it? I mean, come on. This is comics. This is comics, ladies and gentlemen. This is not. Uh, <coughs> This is not a fine art school. I'm teaching you how to draw comics like a pro, not how to draw like Leonardo da Vinci. Um, that would probably take considerably more learning. Anyways, we got eh, about two minutes left. Any last minute real quick draws I can do? I'm going to hand holding a cigarette. That's, what did I do? I'll delete, deselect, brush. Uh, that's fun. So let's see. Cigarette. I love drawing people smoking. I know it's weird. I I don't. I'm not a smoker. I hate smoking itself. <laughs> but boy, drawing people smoking is so much fun because it gives you stuff to do with their hands. Um, it gives you cool fun designy stuff to do with their uh, with the smoke right there's so much cool stuff you can do with smoke this isn't it but I'm just saying um, And obviously this is a dude, because it's very thick hands, but I could taper these in and make it more feminine. Make these fingers smaller, since it's sort of a feminine gesture. Like so. Yeah. <laughs> 
That thumb is still a little too masculine, but anyways. There. A cigarette holding hand. And you're welcome. Uh, he still does it, and you're right, Mike. It looks cool. Yeah, Takeshi Obata has unique hand designs. Well, hey, you know what? Uh, like I said, learn the structure, learn the anatomy, um, and then figure out uh, how you wanna how you wanna play with it and create your own styles. And again, style comes, style comes, style. I'm gonna repeat this from last time. Your structure and your anatomy, and your your self-actualization of the artwork is the steak right it's the meat uh if you want to take a little style from jim lee you want to take a little style from carlos pacheco you want to take a little style from rt bear or anyone that should just be seasoning on the steak you still want it to be you you're just grabbing a little bit from here and a little bit from there you don't want to be a clone of anybody else I know in uh, mainstream that's that's how you get work because editors are too stupid to know how to uh, how to know the difference between good and bad. I know that's why I was trying to make this into a woman's hand because <laughs> let's just say this is um, Rose Tico's hand. <laughs> uh, shush! It's enough out of you. All right. Um, Anyways, this is not Lone Star, not Lone Star, but please do go down to the description if you have not already. Pick up a copy of Lone Star Hard. No, no, no. Soul of the Soldier, not Heart of the Hero. Hey, look, it's Lone Star Smoking Cigarette. Um, that is my book. That has got all my fun, fancy art in it. And uh, if you like what you're seeing here, you want to support me, that is a great way to do it. So here's Lone Star saying. Bye, everybody. Uh, yeah. Comments, questions, what you want to see on the next show, leave it in the comments section. And, uh, well, I guess that's it. Have a great day, and we'll see you on next time. Oh, remember, tonight, Drawn and Quartered is on uh, Edwin's channel. Edwin's, not mine. So if you come here, it won't be here. Edwin Boyette, Drawn and Quartered, 7 o'clock Pacific time. Good day.